The Uyghurs are a people of Turkic origin, whose homeland spans the vast deserts and rugged mountains of northwestern China. Accounting for more than one-sixth of China's total territory, less than 10% of which is habitable, the Uyghur region has always stood at a crossroads of worlds, a meeting point for the Persian, Turkic, Mongol, and Chinese empires. Kashgar is an oasis city that served as a trading post along the Silk Road, the primary artery for trade between China, the Middle East, and Europe. There, the Uyghurs played an important role in cultural exchanges between East and West and developed a unique culture and civilization of their own. Their cuisine is often described as a fusion of Chinese and Middle Eastern flavors. Born in Kashgar, Kudrat Yaqub became the first of the Uyghur region's 13 million minority ethnics to attend Harvard College and on a full scholarship, no less. In 2016, Kudrat stepped away from his investment company to open Yana Kebab Empire in Manhattan, where kebabs and polo are introducing Uyghur cuisine's unique flavor to an American audience. So I was born and grew up in Kashgar, started at college here, and then while I was at college, I uh, took time off to do tech startup, and then we failed miserably, but we learned so much during that experience. I spent about five years being back home, trying to help the local entrepreneurship community. I was looking for a project, something that relates to my own, the cultural background, the religious background, and something that I would feel very meaningful. In the end, I decided to work on the uh, kebab. We have a long history of food culture, and then I would say within the Uyghur cuisine, probably one of the most popular food, or iconic food, I would call it, it's probably the kebab. Can you tell me about the process of making this? So we start out by getting the meat first to the right temperature, and then we basically cut it at that right temperature, mm -hmm. cutting in a certain shade that's perfectly right for the skewers. And then we marinate them using a variety of spices, salt, cumin, black pepper, and then the onion water. And that's about it. What is that? The onion water. We basically chop the onions, and then we squeeze to get the juice of oh, the onion. Wow. And we use that. Wow. Yeah, that's why we call it onion washing. Yeah. Is this typically the proteins that you would find in traditional Uyghur cuisine? Well, actually, for us, uh, in back home, actually, the meat actually we eat is, is lamb. The place where we're located, it's like a landlocked region. You know, we have mm -hmm. high mountain, we have desert. Yes, yeah. And we are far from the, the, the sea, mm -hmm. ocean. So uh, this is also why we don't really eat uh, too much uh, seafood. Yeah. Almost any time when people are talking about meat, and we actually just assume it's lamb. Yeah. It's to that extent. Yeah. yeah. And it's super juicy. It's really, really well seasoned and tastes a lot like cumin spices. I have to be really careful not to get on my white shirt. <laughs> Would you say that in this dish, there is a Chinese influence? Probably in kebab, almost none. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think like the Uyghur kebab has been the origin of the kebabs in places like in Beijing, Shanghai, all those, all those uh, other areas. Mm -hmm. I would say Uyghur kebab is probably the origin of those of all those kebabs. Yes. So I think it should be maybe if we have to say probably it's like the other way around, which is like you know, Uyghur kebab have more influence on the kebabs in other I see. Parts yes, yeah. yeah. Are other Middle Eastern kebabs do they have that similar cumin flavor? Because this is like very, very yeah. cumin yeah. flavor. I mean, which a lot of Chinese cuisine does have yeah, a lot yeah, of cumin. Yeah. But do you know if the other sort of Middle Eastern regions have uh, very cumin forward kebabs uh, like this? I think most of the kebab I have noticed, they would actually use, probably they use less cumin. So what makes a Uyghur kebab different from a Turkish kebab? I would say we are more simple in terms of uh, the ingredients, but we rely more heavily on the meat itself being the high quality meat. Yeah. If the lamb is not the high quality lamb, then it's, it's not going to come out great. Right. Yeah. Historically, I mean, when it comes to like the Turkish and the Uyghur people, the Uyghur people, we are Turk people. Mm -hmm. by the origin. It's the Turk people actually, they started to basically moving all the way to the west to where they are today. The food that we eat today, the polo, the kebab, this is original Turkish food made by the original Turkish people. Mm -hmm. And then... So Turkish food is fusion. <laughs> yeah, I would say the Turkish food itself is actually the westernized version of the wow. Uyghur food. Mm -hmm. 
Uber food has mostly it has been actually very simple. We do have like a lot of variety, but the most popular ones are just those like a few of ones that actually everybody likes to eat almost every day, mm -hmm. like kebab, and then polo. Polo is made with the broth of carrots and also the uh, lamb, the rice that's been steamed within that broth. And then we have a bunch of uh, spices that go in there to create a unique flavor. It sounds very simple in terms of when it comes to ingredients or the whole process, but it's more about the technique of how to make it mm -hmm. uh, that makes it a special polo. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we have some raisin on top, mm -hmm. and we have some very simple salad. This looks amazing. Yeah. So you eat it, uh, do you eat it just like this? With yeah. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. In the, traditionally, in old times, people actually would you eat it with your right hand. But, uh, no, with your hand. Yeah, with your hand. With mm -hmm. your hand. Yeah, 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 yeah. But at home, when you grew up, you ate it with a spoon. Yeah. Um, what what do you Because I was lazy. <laughs> <laughs> the polo is actually kind of a signature food of Uruguay cuisine. Mm -hmm. uh, like I was saying, like the polo and the co-op. Lerman, those are like the, the major, the most popular like food that you would uh, see in uh, almost everywhere you go. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. yeah, it tastes amazing. Some people would say that Uber food is a fusion of Chinese and Turkish cuisine. When it comes to like uh, maybe the influence wise, very recently we started to see a little more like a stirred like fried dishes. Mm -hmm. I think that's the info that we are, we've been getting from the Chinese region. Mm -hmm. At the same time also we've been getting some other kind of dishes from like other parts of the world like uh, from Turkey, uh, even from like uh, you know Thailand, those regions. Yeah. And then making the Muslim version, the halal version mm -hmm. of those dishes. Yeah. On this particular show we're focusing on yeah. fusion cuisines. Yeah. But there's also this other word that's been thrown around, uh, assimilation cuisine. And in some ways, Uyghur cuisine is the very opposite of assimilation cuisine. Because you have um, Chinese from different regions coming into the Uyghur region, uh, and instead of assimilating to traditionally Chinese tastes, it's very important to the Uyghur community to maintain that cuisine, to preserve mm -hmm. that tradition. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what that's like and how that's changed over the years? Yeah, I think uh, when it comes to Uyghur food, the way I feel is uh, the Uyghur food has almost been always the same throughout the history. Yes, I mean, for example, we would uh, try different other kind of cuisine, other kind of food, but we still, for most of the time, we eat our own food because we, we, in so many ways, we think our food is basically just, uh, it's really good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Has it adapted to American tastes at all here? We want to keep this authenticity. Mm -hmm. And this has also been the, the biggest challenge that we've been facing so far. Trying to keep the authenticity of the food and trying to keep up with the speed, the efficiency of this Manhattan. We know this is the most competitive market, where people are super picky when it comes to food, because they get the luxury of tasting everything from all around the world. At the same time, people here are so busy, they don't have the time to wait. So this is the cumin lamb. We have it back home because this is very simple. You know, they just like you have the lamb and then you know like you have the a bunch of red pepper and the green pepper and you have the potatoes and all that mm -hmm. with, with over cumin and all the spices. You just do it at home. Back home actually, we really like to eat lamb and especially the lamb with bone. Like, you yes. Know? But here, especially in this, like in this kind of New York Manhattan setting, they would just come here. They want to grab a quick food and you know that. So if, if it's come out with like you know, bones and like big meat and it's kind of like it's inconvenient mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and also make, kind of making them uncomfortable. So uh, this was something that we created and turns out to be just uh, wildly popular. Mm -hmm. But actually it's not like some unique or like some famous Uyghur dish. Yes. So, yeah. This you adapted in some way to Manhattan's yeah. influence. Can you tell me a little bit about the Uyghur community in New York. For me, I grew up half Korean, and I grew up in a small town in Eugene, Oregon, where yeah. there were two Korean restaurants. So all the Korean people in the small town of Eugene always went to these two restaurants. Uh, is there a similar kind of feeling here in the Uyghur community? Is there a, a big Uyghur community, and do they all kind of have this sense of relief when they come here? Uh, 
Yeah, actually, in New York, probably we have the smallest Uyghur community really? in, in the whole U.S. Yeah. When it comes to Uyghur food, most of those food that we enjoy, we can actually make it at home. But kebab is kind of uh, not that convenient when in terms of you can't really, you know, like cook the kebab every day at home. Mm -hmm. So that's why we, from time to time we have Uyghur customers, they will come here and then yeah. just, you know, try the Uyghur kebab. And we're really happy to see them, you know. Yeah. yeah. I wish we could do the original Uyghur naan, but unfortunately we haven't been able to do that yet. So why is that? I mean, the Uyghur naan usually it's made in uh, Uyghur tunor or like tandoor. Mm -hmm. So uh, we don't have it yet, so uh, hopefully we'll have it in the near future. Is it similar to Indian naan or is it is it different? I would say the Indian naan or like the Turkish like bread naan is more softer. Mm -hmm. The Uyghur naan is a bit more harder. Do you have yeah. anywhere that you go to eat this? The naan? Yes. Real Uyghur naan here in New York, no. Do you, so you must miss it a lot. Oh, of course, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess this is another one great thing about being an entrepreneur in the restaurant business as an like, immigrant, because usually the food is the thing that you would miss the most. Right. You know, when you are outside home. But then and I, as an entrepreneur, we can always try to make those food from back home. So uh, that's uh, something that I think uh, we're fortunate mm -hmm. to be able to do. Yeah, that's great.